Let's see how to find the height of a binary tree. Here by height we mean the number of edges in a path from the root node to a leaf node that is the largest. For example, in this tree the path that consists of most edges from the root node to a leaf node is this one here from 1 to 7 because it consists of 3 edges. On the other hand the path from 1 to 4 and 1 to 5 consists of only 2 edges. The height of this tree is 3. On the other hand if we have a tree which consists only of a single node then that node is the only leaf node in the tree so the height is 0 and if the tree is empty then the height is minus 1. So how do we actually find the height of a tree? The idea is to start at the root node and then ask what is the height of the left subtree. That will tell us what is the number of edges in a path from this root node to any of the leaf nodes that consists of most edges. So for example in this case it would be 1 because all the paths from the root node 2 to a leaf 4 or 5 consists of only a single edge. And then we ask what is the height of the right subtree? So in this case we would get a 2 because the path from 3 to 7 is the only path from a root node to leaf node and it consists of two edges. Then we pick the maximum of the two and we add 1 to it. The reason we need to add 1 is for this edge. So in this case the maximum of the two would be this 2 and we need to add 1 for this edge so it will have Three, so the height of this tree would be 3 and that's what we would return. So let's actually run through this. So once we are at the root 1 we ask what is the height of the left subtree. Now here again we ask what is the height of the left subtree. When 4 then asks what is the height of the left subtree because the left of 4 is null it gets a minus 1. And then ask what is the height of the right subtree. Again the right of 4 is null so it gets a minus 1. Then we pick the maximum between the two. So the maximum between minus 1 and minus 1 is minus 1. And we add 1 to it. So that will be 0. So 4 would return 0 to the 2. Then 2 asks what is the height of the right subtree. Again the 5 asks what is the height of the left. The left of 5 is null so it's minus 1. The right of 5 is also null so that's also minus 1. The maximum between minus 1 and minus 1 is minus 1. Then plus 1 is 0, so 5 also returns 0. And then 2 picks the maximum between 0 and 0, so that's 0, plus 1, so that's 1, and that's what 2 returns. Then 1 asks, what is the height of the right subtree? Now 3 asks, what is the height of the left? The left of 3 is null, so that's minus 1. And then asks, what is the height of the right subtree? So 6 again asks, what is the height of the left subtree? Uh, now 7, when it goes to the left it gets a minus 1, then it goes to the right it also gets minus 1. So the maximum between the two is minus 1, plus 1 is 0. That's what 6 gets. And 6 asks what is the height of the right? That would be minus 1. So the maximum between 0 and minus 1 is 0, plus 1 is 1. So 6 returns 1. Now 3 takes the maximum between minus 1 and 1, which is 1. Plus 1 is 2, so 3 returns 2. And now 1 picks the maximum between 1 and 2, so that's 2, plus 1 is 3, and that's what it returns. And that indeed is correct, this is the height of this tree. Let's see how to actually implement this. So we'll have a function called height, which takes the address to the root node and returns an integer, in this case the height. The first thing we need to do is to check for the base case where root is null and in that case we would need to return minus 1. But if root is not null we need to compute the height of the left subtree. So left height will be height of root left. Then compute the height of the right subtree. So right height would be height of root right. And then we would need to return the maximum between the two plus one. We would return if left height is larger than right height, then left height plus one, otherwise right height plus one. And that's the whole function. Let's run through an example to verify that it actually works.
So here we have the same tree we've seen before. We call our function height passing in root one. So the initial value of root one. We check, is it null? One is not null. So we go and ask what is the height of the left subtree. So the left of one is two. So we call this function recursively, this time with root two. Again, two is not null. And we again hit this case where we ask what is the height of the left? The left of two is four. So again, we call this function recursively this time with the four. It is not null. And we go again to the left. This time the left of four is null. So we call this function with null. And so we hit the base case where root is equal to null. And so this returns minus one. So four gets a minus one from the left. Then it asks, what is the height of the right? The right of four is again null. So we hit again this base case. So this is minus one. Then we return whichever one is larger. This time they're both minus one. So we return right hand plus right height plus one. So that would be minus one plus one, which is zero. So four was the right, the left of two. So the left of two gets a zero. So the left height is zero. Then we ask what is the right height? The right of two is five. We call this with the five. It's not null. We ask what is the height of the left? The left of five is null, so it's minus one. The right of five is also null. So again, we hit this case, so it's minus one. And we pick the larger of the two plus one, so that will be minus one plus one. It is zero. So we return zero and five is the right of two, so right of two is zero. Once the right of two returns, we pick whichever is the larger of the two, in this case, zero and zero, so we return zero plus one, which is one. And two is the left of one, so the left of one gets a one. Once the left of one returns, we go to the right of one. The right of one is three, so we call the function recursively with the three. It's not null, we ask what is the height of the left. The left of three is null, so we hit the base case. So this is minus one. And we ask what is the height of the right. The right of three is six, so we call the function recursively with the six. It's not null, we ask what is the height of the left. The left of six is seven. Again, it's not null, we ask what is the height of the left. The left of seven is null, so that's minus one. The right of seven is also null, so that's also minus one. We pick the larger of the two plus one, so that will be minus one plus one, zero. So seven returns zero, and seven was the left of six. Once the left of six is done, we go to the right of six. The right of six is null, so we hit the base case, and so this is minus one. And we pick the larger of this two, this time it's left height, so 0 plus 1 is 1, so 6 returns 1, and 6 is the right of 3, so the right of 3 is 1. Once the right of 3 returns, we pick the larger of the two, this time it's right hand, which is 1, we return it plus 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, so 3 returns 2, and 3 is the right of 1, so that's a 2. Once the right of 1 is returned, we return the maximum of left height and right height, which is 2 plus 1, so that's 3. So 1 returns a 3, which indeed is the height of this tree. Let's analyze the time complexity. Because we will end up computing the height of every node, this means that we will end up executing this so not hitting the base case, but executing this for every single node in the tree. So we will do this n times. And because every single time we do two recursive calls, this means that there will be a total of two n calls. n of those calls is the one where we end up here and we do a constant amount of work. So that's all of n work. And the remaining n times are the ones where we hit the base case, where we root equal to null. So that's also all of one work done n times, so that's all of n. So the time complexity would be all of n. 
let's analyze this space complexity. Because we have a recursive function, the space complexity will depend on how big will the call stack grow. And since every call we either move to the left or the right, so we go one level deeper in the tree, the question is, how deep will we go before we hit the base case and start returning back, going up the tree? So this will keep going until we hit a leaf node. And once we hit the leaf node, that's where we start hitting base cases and going up the tree. So the maximum number of calls that we will have will be equal to the height of the tree. So the space complexity is O of H, where H is the height of the tree. You can find the link to the code in the description below.